Okay, here we are for part three of the Axle SCX-10 Dingo build. And our next step is step 16. We're going to be putting together the links. We already got the Ys and everything on the axles and the drive shafts done. So we're going to start on this step 16 and get the links. So let me get all the parts out and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Went and got all the parts. I had a little food part going on there. These little rod ends here. Sorry for the arms. Little rod ends here. They were said they were going to be on a parts tree. This one here, AX832. And I only had one of those. It looks like I was supposed to have two. But I did find some more on another part tree. And that tree was AX8005. And I'm pretty sure a lot of these are extra. So they were the same size and everything. So I'm just using them. No harm, no foul. But if you run into that, just look at that other tree. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is take these rod ends. And I always take another tool and stick through so I got something to hold. And you stick your tip of the all thread into your bit. And I like to screw mine on the rod end itself. And I take it in about halfway. And there again, don't forget this is plastic, so don't go too fast. It'll heat up. And you also don't want to overdo it where you throw the shape out so just tighten these up I like to put them in the rod ends because they normally go in them harder and then you can just screw it right into the aluminum it's about half and you take your aluminum rod and just screw it on there. Now you can use thread lock if you want. But once you've got these things on. There's really nothing for it to turn. So. And they do have little notches down here. Where you can put some pliers to hold this still. And just, I like to give mine a turn where I got the. Where it says axle. So you can read that. And you just do the same thing on the other ones. way make sure that nothing's poking out the other end you'll see a little white mark in there if you're getting too far Just repeat that step three more times and you, know, you gotta pop these little ends in. Little ball ends, sorry for the arms. There you go, and that's one right in. So I'm gonna finish them up and I'll be right back. Okay, we got all got all four right ends done. Now they're wanting us to put it on the front axle so we'll grab that you got the front axle and the shock take one of these long screws turn the hole they want this end facing in the flat end so we'll do that and the flat end on the shock coming back. You know, 
want the two flat ends on the ball couplers on there to, to hit each other. I guess it almost like creates its own washer that way. Okay. Well, actually, I just told you that backwards. I'm sorry. Shot goes on the outside. Thought something was looking weird. Link on the inside. part of the drive shaft there and you take one of these nylon nuts and you take your well you could use your wrench if you like but they drive me crazy and we don't pay our pliers Snug that up. You don't want to over tighten it because it does have a little lock nut on it. You don't want to smash your ends there. And there's that half. All right. Well, I'm going to get the other one on there and uh, I'll be right back. <coughs> ah, excuse me. Okay, we're back. All right. Well, there's uh, the front axle one. All complete and I don't know if anybody noticed but I went through all the trouble to make sure the word the axle faced out when I put it together the first time it was facing in so I took that apart and fixed it and uh, we got her all there so we're going to move on to the next step which is the rear axle basically the same thing as this one was so we'll get through that and then we're going to start on the transmission so let me get the rear one put together and I'll be right back all right, and there's the rear. Links and shocks and everything, so that's complete. The next thing we'll be doing is the transmission, which wants us to open bag D. Bag D, yeah, here we go. And this will have the gears and stuff in there. The hardware part of it. Some bearings. That's the clutch. Alright, so we won't need this part right away. Alright, I'm sure the gears are in the plastic part. A couple of pins I'm sure I'm going to need. Alright, well I'll get them, uh, well here they are. These gears here, so. Let's see what we start with. Let me make sure I got all my parts and I'll be right back. Okay. First thing he wants to do is get these little bearings and push them into smaller gear. Alright, then this 
this little pin will go through that. And then they want us to grease that up and put it in the housing. But I'm going to do a little bit of this bigger part so I don't uh, get covered in grease so many times. So. Okay, I got to get a few more little plastic pieces and I'll be right back. Okay. Let's see. I knew there were some more parts somewhere. Okay, we gotta take this piece here. Line it up on there. Then you want this plastic piece. Okay, give me just a minute to figure this out, and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Got another little step. Got a little confusing. I don't know if you can see this here. But this piece right here, they're showing in between. And it's just as thick as this gear. I'm not really sure what they were trying to say, but it definitely can't go in between. It keeps these gears too far away too far apart and it doesn't fit in this little hole here or anything so don't think that's what it was and the screws that put this together are, were definitely too short anyway so we just put it together this way I don't really know what that was all about but I'm gonna keep it just in case I run into it as we're going and uh, we'll go from there so I got this piece put together Here's the housing. I got this little piece put together. They want us to grease all that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this piece together here real quick, which is going to take one of these real small pins. Then this gear goes on. And the pins fit in there and it kind of snaps. So now they want me to grease everything. Let me find where I do it my little tube of grease and put the cap back on my thread lock before I spill that again. Let's see, grease. If I have a tube of grease, I'd be right here. Okay. So they want you to grease your transmission up pretty good. Grease that. I got the bearings in there. This part goes in here. Just a paper towel. I want to grease this. This here. Okay. 
Alright, some big bearings go on here. That goes in the bottom. More small bearings going here and here, and they go through the top. Okay, and then they want to take the other half. off of me and it. Ain't a whole lot to build in the transmission. I do like that they got the pictures on here so you can see what's going on. It looks like they only want us to put this one screw in for now. Grub screw in there before I lose it. Okay, and that's. And you want to put the little cap on there. Alright, and that's it for that step. That's the transmission part there. There's still more to it. It's one tooth burger. Or pinion, excuse me. Alright. The rest is putting this rest of this transmission together. So let me get the cover part on and stuff. This is starting to get a little boring. We did the, the main part I wanted everybody to see. And I'll get this together and I'll be right back. Okay, I got the, the back half of the cover on and these three screws here screw into this and kind of hold the whole thing together. I always like to spin the transmission too to make sure everything's still working fine. The spur gear was real easy. You take these three screws and you put it into this clutch plate. And then you there's a sticky adhesive on one side of this pad. You glue it to it or peel off the backing and stick it to it. And then now we just we're going to assemble the rest of this. We got to find this little spacer. They were saying it was in a plastic part, but this kid actually sent me an aluminum one, so that's nice. So that'll go in here. Alright. Then we're going to have to put another one of them real small pins. These are always tricky.
Right, you put the pin in there. Another piece going in this part. Which I also, since I've touched it and that grease, I got a nice clean paper towel. And I'm going to make sure I don't get nothing on that. Try to get this pin lined up. Right. So we're up to here now this part goes on. Then the spring and a medium sized washer and the nut. All right, then you take your T wrench and Tighten that up. Tells you to tighten it up until it stops turning. And then after you've done that, you loosen it two turns. All right. So there's a half, one, one and a half, two. All right. So that's the transmission. And then it's going to want us to mount our motor on there. Which I'm not going to bore you all with that. That's an easy process. I bought the RC four-wheel drive 65 turn for this because I like to crawl and go slow. I don't like to bash too much. And this video is getting a little long, so we're going to stop this here. So this is where we're at. Got all of our links on, our shocks on, drive shafts, front and rear. Got our transmission built. From here we're going to mount the motor and then put it on the mounting plate. And then we'll start with the servo parts on the axles. All right, so that's it for now, and I appreciate y'all watching this, and uh, please click like, and do leave comments. I do like comments, good or bad. I hope not too many bad. Um, and uh, subscribe. Until next time, bye.